Hey everyone, it's Linda Pacini and this time I've got a series of tips that I'm going to share with you and this is all about cover and chain stitching. So to begin with, I'm going to show you a couple techniques that I think are invaluable, especially when you're sewing on knits and you're sewing in the round. So a top like this that I'm wearing is one that you definitely want to be able to finish off the hem by going in the round. And the first tip that I have for you is how to go in the round without making yourself crazy. A lot of people like to turn their project inside out and then you're thinking like, how do I line up the foot? Don't do it. Leave your fabric with the pretty side out and let me show you how to line things up in such a way that you're gonna be able to go around in a circle end things beautifully. And I've got a really good tip for you at the very end. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the fact that I've already chain stitched. So my stitching is all collected together. And what I want to do before I start stitching on my fabric is I want to make sure that I've got some loose ends. Here's tip number one. With my needles in the highest position, I'm going to take my hand wheel on the side of the machine. I'm going to rotate it until my needles are down inside of the machine. Stop right there. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to rotate backwards just until the needles are up. And what that does is it releases the chain. So now what I can do is raise my presser foot and look at this. I can pull my threads out. They're not all squashed together and it makes it really easy to slide my fabric underneath. I think you'd like that tip. The next thing I'm gonna do is I've sewn a little mock sleeve here and I've got this so that I'm just kind of tucked up a little bit. So. I'm not teaching you how to get a perfect hem right here, although it is something that can be done. I just want to show you how to be able to get this to manage. So I'm going to slide my fabric underneath. And quite honestly, I like to start kind of in the neighborhood of where my seam is. So on a top like this, my seams underneath are over here, right? And so who really cares if that doesn't look perfect because you're not really looking at that anyway. So I always start there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up my sleeve and I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm gonna pull it so that it's right around where that hem is and lower it. Now watch what I'm doing. I'm just going to work in little small pieces like this and I can go around in a circle. Now, when you first get started, if you notice that your fabric doesn't wanna move, do yourself a favor and give it a little bit of a tug on the back. The reason why it's doing that is because there's a little throat space that's open. And when you've got the bulk of a couple seams, it might be just kind of hitting against that. It's simple mechanics. It's not going to go anywhere unless you kind of ease it through. That's okay. And once you've got it done, you can go ahead and stitch. Now, a couple things that I like to point out to people, you can kind of feel if there's an extra layer of fabric underneath a single layer. Like if I close my eyes, I can feel that, right? And what you can do if you want is you can use the little notches on the toe of your foot. And actually that's exactly where your needle is. So even though, like I said, I'm not teaching you how to hem around something, I'm gonna go ahead and work in that direction. So I'm gonna kind of go over here and I can feel my extra layer. And all I'm gonna do is as I'm going around, I can feel it. I'm lining the toe of my foot up so that it matches it. And as you can tell, I'm just going around. So you might be thinking, sure, that's easy. You got a big old opening. I'm telling you right now, try it. Even on something small, like a child size garment, you can do this going in the round. The trick is don't try to do something inside out. It just, it gets kind of complicated and confusing. Now, another thing I'm gonna tell you, if you watch my tip from earlier, it was a completely separate video. I talked about the value of the foot. And so I'm using the Teflon foot because it just glides over this brush knit. And now when you get to the very end, you're gonna notice that I'm coming right up to where my stitches were before. And I've got my chain looper thread down there. Now here's my other little tip. I'm going to guide so that my stitches that I did previous are gonna line up right here. And as I see that coming to the window, right? I can tell that it's there. All I have to do now is I'm going to rotate my hand wheel towards me until I've got my thread, my needles in the highest position. The next thing I'm gonna do is I like to reach and get my Allen wrench that's inside of my machine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise my presser foot and I like to take my hand and just pull those needle threads towards me. And then I'm gonna slide my Allen wrench between my foot 
and the needles themselves, and I'm going to pull those forward. Well, once I do that, I can cut my threads. I can pull this straight out to the back. And what that essentially does is it locks my stitches. So all I have to do now is, well, you can tell that I didn't meet it really good. This is a lesson, it's not perfection. But guess what, what if you really did something and you didn't like how it looks? So let's kind of inspect this. Remember I said I wasn't gonna teach you how to hemp, but as I could feel it, I did a good job. So you can too. Now, what if you really care about the stitching and what if it really does look terrible and the last thing you wanna do is walk around wearing something that you made and have people go like, wow, you did a kind of a lousy job, didn't you? Here's the trick. This last tip is gonna be, how do you rip out stitching that you did? And I'm gonna show you on this fabric because I think you'll be able to see the stitches a lot better. I'm gonna open up my stitch length to make it just a skosh longer so you can really see what I'm doing. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just stitch down my fabric. Now the trick to be able to getting things ripped out easily is know where you end it and I'm ending on this edge of the fabric. So the end that I stopped at is this one here, and this is how you rip stuff out. The first thing you want to do, and you could even do this if you went around in the round, or let's just say you're partly through going all the way around and you realize it's a disaster, stop right there and do this. What you wanna do is you wanna cut the threads so that you've got nothing down here, right? And it's gonna start lifting pretty easily. But what I'm gonna tell you to do is just take the first couple stitches that you've got out. Once you've broken those stitches, it's really easy to grab your chain looper thread. I'm gonna grab this guy here and watch. And now you can do it the right way. So that's a lot of tips for somebody who's got a cover and chain stitch. Practice makes perfect. Don't be afraid of your machine. Don't be afraid to try something. And if it doesn't look good, rip it out. That's a tip from me to you, and I will see you next time. <music>